Greetings viewers, Metadai here with another review for all of you. So about a week ago, I got into an anime that came out in 2015 called Assassination Classroom, an action comedy anime about how the students of E-Class, who are considered social losers due to lackluster performances and other factors, are charged with skinning an alien creature that brags to have blown up half of the moon and promises to destroy the entire Earth unless they can assassinate him by March. Until then, he's going to be acting as their teacher. Since he's unable to be harmed by ordinary weapons, and proves to be too fast by bullets and other weapons specifically designed to harm him, the creature has been named Koro Sensei, which means Unkillable Teacher, by Kaede Kayano. The manga has 21 volumes, published in Shonen Jump magazine, and 47 episodes, produced by Fuji TV, and translated by Viz Media and Funimation. I decided to watch the anime after coming across a video of their finest moments, and regret not having watched it when it came to America. After this anime, Sunny Street has become one of my favorite voice actors. First you take the planet Earth, round and blue and green, and floating over Tokyo you drop a giant bean. Put another one in Sichuan, China, what a sheen. Taking off from Dubai to Hawaii at Mach 20, leave controls as you fly. Double back across the southern hemisphere of the Philippines once again to old Dubai. And then back to Hawaii, drawing lines of latitude every 25 degrees along the way. And there you have it! Korose Insei! See? Simple! Now you try it! Are you kidding? As great as the anime is, it's really not the subject of today's review. Its spin-off, Koro Sensei Quest is. It takes place in an RPG setting, Kuniki Gaka, Train Zeroes, and the class has some rather undesirable quirks that hinders their performances as heroes. These quirks are called bugs, and they're treated as defects. Like a Yume Isagai, who's viewed as a Prince Charming in both continuities, just wears the front half of a suit of armor, and another student fights with a dirty plunger rather than a sword. He class is once again charged with slaying Koro Sensei, although not because he's threatening to blow up the world, but rather in this continuity, he's the final boss known as the Demon King, and simply wants to see if a bunch of nobodies can take him down. Assassination Classroom has a good balance of action, comedy, science fiction, and even a bit of tragedy that took its time and even examined and developed characters like the main man Lee and Nine Sets Yoda, Karma Akabane, Kayano, and even focused on the developing relationship between the government agent Kurosama and the assassin Yuri Nagelope. This series, however, is focused completely on comedy. While you probably could watch this show and enjoy it without any knowledge of the parent series, it's pretty obvious that Koro Sensei Quest is aimed at the fans of Assassination Classroom and has quite a few jokes that rely on you having watched AC first. This is the prospective new recruit you were looking for, yes? <laughs> I bring him to you new and improved. Behold the next Demon King. <laughs> it's you! We meet again, Koro Sensei. Yanagi Sawa! <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> Episode 9 of this series is basically just a super abridged version of a 6 episode arc. I'm probably just gonna put up a spoiler warning for now, in case you haven't watched either series yet. So if you've watched Assassination Classroom, you're probably aware of how Koro Sensei came to be. Once an unmatched assassin called simply the Reaper, he allowed himself to be experimented upon in order to gain more power, but became the teacher of E-Class. After accident to killing their previous teacher, Angry Yukimura, due to the pair of them having developed a relationship while she'd been observing him at the request of her fiancé. What's Koro Sensei's origin here? He used to be a heroic prince who, because he felt like he had no further heroic deeds to perform, visited a career counselor who told him that the current Demon King had gotten bored of his own long life and was willing to let Koro Sensei take over for him. Koro Sensei took on his octopus-like form after wearing a cursed robe from the Demon King. Why did this version of Koro Sensei become a teacher? He got bored of being the Demon King. 
Pretty much every character is given a different role here. Here, that goes from a femme fatale to a witch who can seduce any man by winging at him and has an entire town under her control. Gaku Hasano, who is the school's principal, is now a country's pope. With his son and his four friends, who are top model students, are now his paladins. Rather than a mad scientist, Shiro was one of Kuro Sensei's followers, but turned against him for training such subpar heroes. Originally an AI, Ritsu is now a mage, housed within a stone slab, which everyone around her is convinced is just a costume. In AC, Kunodon was the cartoon mascot of the school, and would praise its socialist mindset, but here he's been duplicated, and serves as basic monsters, and every E-class and as a dungeon. The tone of the villains has also changed. While Chris Riker still gives us another that haughty vibe from before, the Pope slash principal is played more comedically rather than a corrupt authority figure. Can he sacrifice himself to save the lives of his students? We are about to see his true nature. A monster has no business being a teacher. Show yourself, reveal your black heart, and bear your fangs, Demon King! Stop. Good morning, students. This is, of course, your principal speaking. It seems I have another handful of emotionally fraught questions from your less stable peers today. So, let's address some concerns. Here's a puzzler from one class pet duty. Incomprehensible name. Our friend writes, I'm infatuated with an older man. What can I do to get his attention? Hmm, romantic advice. First, you must gain control of this man, mind, body, and soul. Learn everything about him. Place of residence, family dynamic, who are his parents, what's his salary, does he have a well-managed stock portfolio, every piece of information you can find. The more you know about a person, the more exploitable weaknesses you'll find. Like any skill, this will take time to cultivate. Practice on your fellow classmates. Shiro was basically the second recurring villain, a scientist determined to kill Kuro-sensei with the help of his protege Izuno, who had been equipped with tentacles sprung out the top of his head. Here, he's basically a one-shot character. Look out, sir! Whoa, look at him! He's actually matching Kuro-sensei's speed! That's the way, Yutona. Kill him good. I'm Ghost. The same goes for Akira Takaka, who was a villain in the original series. Going from a psycho to a bandit who kidnaps Princess Nagisa and holds her ransom. Well, the second Reaper, who was Goro Sensei's protege, is played for comedy here. While in the original series, he was a very real friend. Ha! I seek the Demon King! You. So it's true. You've turned to evil. You, huh? Excuse me, young man, but um, do we know each other from somewhere? I'm your pupil. Don't tell me you've forgotten. Whatever all this is, I demand an explanation. What can I say? Being a hero simply lost its luster for me. Of course, it turns out 80% of what a demon king does is sit and brood. You couldn't have picked a better time to show up. Newsflash! I'm not here to alleviate your boredom. I'm here to vanquish you. Oh. That's not a very nice thing to say. Do you have any idea how many new monsters started showing up the minute you turned your back on the hero game? I can't remember the last time I got good sleep! I've been so busy slaying my levels to the friggin' roof! Ah, uh, congratulations, my boy. I knew you had it in you. Are you patronizing me? Ethan drops his lust to kill Kuro Sensei after one episode, and instead, most of the time, acts like a child in awe of an older sibling. Which might be in reference to how Ina was originally introduced as Kuro Sensei's younger brother. In the original series, Karma's main character portrays that he's arrogant and cocky. While that works against him in the main series, and his character develops a bit, here he keeps his condescending attitude, which adds to the comedy. <laughs> All bark and no bite, huh? You could live a bazillion years and not get close to beating me. Ah, yes. You see, when Karma thinks his opponents are beneath it... <laughs> That's right, Fleabags, laugh it up while you can. After that, go run back to the shelter and get yourself euthanized. The effect on his luck is rather negative. A few bits of comedy in this show also comes from Breaking the Fourth Wall. And most it comes from UBC Fua, whose stick was already making references. Oh no, this is bad. Yeah, but for who? You don't think Koro Sensei's met his match? It's not that. This series is a comedy! The show's tone just took a 180! What does that even mean? The concept was 
supposed to be lighthearted! But in the 10th episode, the character Takabayashi gets this line. Perk up, no point being so negative. E-Class has its share of good points. Huh. That's hilarious. You idiots have even less screen time than I do. <laughs> I'm not sure what else to say about this series. While it does stick to one genre, and I know how much people hate it, when an action series has a spin-off that goes for straight comedy, and maybe people in Japan feel the same way about this, and similar shows, the way people feel about Teen Times Go or Thundercats Roar, I genuinely feel that this works. It's simply meant to be fun and nothing more. Like with the parent series, I highly recommend you watch Kara Sensei Quest. Each episode is only 10 minutes long, so you can probably get to the series in less than a day. This is not that I say. Thanks for letting me share my thoughts. Please share yours with me.